My name is Fiona Carney, and I am the director of the Glucksman Gallery at University College Cork. I'm delighted to be with you today in the context of the Glucksman's project, 100 Years of Change, which is funded by Cork City Council as part of the Lord Mayor's Commemoration Fund. Over the last century, there have been extraordinary technological developments that have revolutionized how we work, travel, play and communicate not least in the context of photography, where if we speak about taking a picture, we are now more likely to reach for a mobile device than a camera. But some things remain remarkably consistent, such as our desire to capture and preserve the likeness of those we care about and to have those images ready to hand. Today, I'm going to look at how some of the earliest images in photography were created and how over a hundred years ago, Cork artists working in the numerous photographic studios that existed throughout the city centre would manipulate images to create a better representation of and for their clients, such as this wonderful image from Callaghan in Cork from around 1860 of a young girl with a hand tinted ribbon in blue posing in front of a painted backdrop and using a table and a small book as a prop. Photography or recording images by the action of light on a sensitive material was invented in the early 19th century. One of the earliest, if not the first images of a person in a photograph was taken by Frenchman Louis Daguerre in 1838. The image shows an empty street but because exposure time was over 10 minutes, the usually busy moving traffic was, was not able to appear. The exception is the man at the bottom left, who stood still getting his boots polished long enough to show. As a contemporary noted at the time, the boulevard in question was usually filled with a moving throng of pedestrians and carriages. But the street in Daguerre's early photograph appears to be completely deserted except for the individual who was having his boots brushed. In fact, the shoeshine man himself must also be included as one of the first human figures to be depicted in photography, because as a German magazine of 1839 observed, the man having his boots polished must have held himself extremely still, for he can be clearly seen. In contrast, the shoeshine man, whose ceaseless movement causes him to appear completely blurred and imprecise. The early photographic artists were keen to exploit the possibilities that this new medium offered and often staged and superimposed images so that they could create more interesting pictures than was possible with just one shot. Henry Peach Robinson's Fading Away combines five different negatives to produce one melodramatic narrative of a young woman dying, perhaps of tuberculosis. The heightened drama of the picture relies on the idea that photography captures reality, whereas in fact the artist has combined the different negatives to create this single image. The turbulent sky and strongly lit interiors would not have been possible to record simultaneously, but create an effective scene for the emotional story the artist wishes to convey. It certainly appealed to the Victorian sensibilities of its time and was even purchased by Prince Albert, the husband of Queen Victoria. Perhaps photography's greatest test of truth bearing came when the photographer Edward Maybridge sought to answer the question of whether a horse ever becomes fully airborne. Certainly that was the pictorial convention to convey speed, as you can see in this wonderful painting by the French artist Théodore Jericho entitled Derby in Epsom. The wealthy American industrialist Leyland Stanford was convinced that horses did completely leave the ground and he commissioned Maybridge to provide proof. Maybridge developed a way to take photos with an exposure lasting a fraction of a second and with reporters as witnesses arranged 12 cameras along a track on Stanford's estate. As a horse sped by it tripped up the wires connected to the cameras taking 12 photos in rapid succession. Maybridge developed the images on site and revealed that a horse is indeed completely aloft, but only when its hooves are tucked underneath it for a brief moment during a stride and never with its hooves outstretched as was previously the convention in painting. This understanding of photography as a definitive and objective record has obviously been complicated by our more recent understanding of the use of technology to manipulate and create fake images. But as you can see, photography has always had a complicated relationship to the truth. And from the very outset, artists were exploring ways to create images that invented as well as depicted reality. 
We are pretty used to the idea that photographs and magazines have been retouched to create somewhat idealized images. And in recent years, mobile technologies have provided all kinds of filters that enhance or dramatically alter our own portraits. But this is not a new development. Historian Olaf Fitzpatrick has created a fantastic online collection of the vernacular photography of Ireland at jacolette.wordpress.com. And here she gathers many images of the carte de visite or cabinet cards that were popular in the 19th and early 20th century. A number of the images on her website feature photographs taken in Cork studios, such as this one run by the Frenchman Adam Alphonse Sauvy. Sylvie took this image of a cork-based client who would of course have been wearing some extremely restrictive corsetry. But as we can see on closer inspection, the studio photographer has in fact retouched the image to give his subject the tiny wasp waist that was so fashionable at the time. In contrast, John Halpin's Joanna is somewhat striking in her ordinariness. Even if her scale is impossibly large, her shape is refreshingly average. John is using the possibility of technology to invite us to think about the way in which we inhabit space more than how we look. So the next time you look at this wonderful work, or indeed a picture of your own making, you can reflect on how photography helps us not just to see the world with new eyes, but has always sought to create worlds and imagine new possibilities of being. And perhaps in knowing that, whatever technology we are using, we can think more carefully about how images might really depict people and how we ourselves want to be portrayed.